please enjoy this bonus content from a previously recorded interview with Mike Allen. And I feel the need to elaborate a little bit on that. That doesn't mean that the publishing house Mythic Delirium has been around for 30, for 25 years. It means that something with the name Mythic Delirium has been around for, for 25 years. It started as a, a little zine that, that I put out twice a year starting in, in 1998 and has kind of gradually grown and grown and grown. And it's still not very large, but we've managed to accomplish a lot of cool stuff. So, yeah. uh, you know, much, you know, much to be happy about there for us. I tend to, I tend to write very much. Well, I, I write, I, I don't kind of pigeonhole myself writing one thing. Like uh, some of these pieces are kind of experimental. Some of them are, are very straightforward and mm -hmm. some of them have science fiction elements. Some of them have, have like uh, epic fantasy elements, even though they're still kind of horror stories. And, you know, some of them have a noir feel, feel. Uh, you know, some of them are subtle ghost stories. Some of them are super gory. Uh, so, you know, I, I have fun kind of exploring the the, the whole range of dark imagination in, in what I come up with. So the next one, um, <laughs> I think I just kind of pick, they're not controversial, but I do feel like I've picked out some harder questions for you. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's cool. Um, is there an unpopular book, something that um, was well known, but maybe just a lot of people didn't like that you actually enjoyed? Hmm. So I don't know that I can think of like a really widely panned book that I'm a big fan of. I, I know that you know, just about just about any author who actually has a, a high profile mm -hmm. is gonna is gonna have their share of haters <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Um I I think may, maybe what the way I would answer that is there's there's a lot of really obscure titles mm -hmm. that that I'm that I'm you know an admirer of that I kind of think deserve a wider audience, but haven't found it. Yeah. Um, and uh, the so the first book that the first book that comes to mind to me, I, I I don't as as an example of this. And this is a book that definitely would not be to all tastes, but yeah. it's uh, it's by an author who's who's no longer with us, named uh, Brian McNaughton. Okay. And it's called The Throne of Bones. And I I think uh you'll hear a little bit of a theme here because you you heard me mention that I that my novel, The Black Fire Concerto, has ghouls right. as monsters. And this is this is a novel that is actually about uh it's actually about ghouls. Oh, and okay. <laughs> although, although you know, of course, and here's a here's a controversial author, but this this is ghouls, not as not as just kind of another word for zombies like I used it, but but ghouls as they were uh, imagined by H.P. Lovecraft and his his uh, contemporaries in you know the sort of the 30s and 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 40s uh, like Clark Ashton Smith. Uh, you know the 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 folks who, the folks who originated what some people today kind of refer to as the quintessential weird tale. Right. There's actually many sort of definitions of what you know a weird tale is, but that's definitely one of them. The stuff yeah. that like Lovecraft came up with, and uh, you know, so Lovecraft's ghouls, uh, probably the most the best known story. In, in which he included them was a was a horror tale called Pickman's Model, mm -hmm. but he actually you know imagined, <clears throat> you know the reason why Lo Lovecraft as a person was kind of a pathetic figure, but you know he 
he was kind of amazing at world building, which yeah. is which I think is why he's still talked about today. And so he actually he actually kind of imagined this sort of underground, uh, this sort of underground society and how these ghouls sort of live. And so Brian Brian McNaughton actually like it's not the entire book, but he actually like sets several stories kind of in this ghoul society. And if you're somebody, if you're somebody who can appreciate uh, extreme horror, you know, what he wrote is, is, was, is, was both beautiful and just deeply, deeply disturbing. <laughs> and, uh, so of course I ended up ad admiring that book a lot, but I don't think you know many people. You know, it it won I think a World Fantasy Award when it came out, but you know the World Fantasy Award you know isn't quite like the Hugo. It, it's right. not yeah you know people, you know winning winning a World Fantasy Award doesn't turn doesn't make a book famous. <laughs> so, you know it. I I it can help with sales. I I have I have observed that happen because um sorry if, sorry for this segue that's sort of a non sequitur but um one I don't have it in front of me but one in and you as you know I'm I'm actually recovering from knee surgery so I can't hop up and go get it but uh <laughs> uh an Mythic Delirium Books published Bone Swans there's a bone theme here bone swans which is the which was the debut uh collection of short fiction by claire cooney who, who writes under the name cse cooney and that book won the world fantasy award it's big we're so proud of that obviously and and so i saw a sales spike when that happened but you know I, I, again you know just because that brian mcnaughton book won doesn't mean many people have heard of it now and and so i i like to kind of point it out to people when i can uh and that's not the only book that that i have encountered like that um so uh i livia llewellyn is not an unknown writer in in the world of horror but i'm i'm not sure i'm 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 not sure to what degree people know about her books and her her debut uh collection um her 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 day her debut collection is is one that that really blew me away and and that i i also love talking about and that's called the engine of desire okay. uh and she's she's another she her her more recent uh her her more her more recent material has been very surreal which which is appealing in its own way but that that first book the the end the the engines of desire is just so it's it's got the it's 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 got the you know kind of a surreal touch to the stories that i like but it's also uh it's also really kind of hardcore and extreme <laughs> and so i and so i dig it I, I was just blown away by it when that came out so i guess that's two or three examples Oh, that's great. Depending on how you count it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love listening to people talk about books that they enjoy or appreciate or, I mean, just like everything you said, like, I feel like that's me just talking to people on a daily basis about books and they're like, what lady? So I love <laughs> everything that you just said. I, I yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> so but, I, I had the guy who I guess names I guess names can be named. I don't think this is a secret. The so the guy who founded Submission Grinder. Okay. Uh, I, I I don't I if he ever sees this, I apologize. I can't immediately remember his name. <laughs> 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 but he um he used to review um he he used to review podcasts like uh you know uh, Starship Sofa and Pseudopod and uh, Podcastle and etc. And he named the Pseudopod adaptation of the Button Bin as one of his top ten uh, 
one of his one of his top 10 audio adaptations wow but but he hated the second person <laughs> yeah and 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 he and i actually had a little exchange i was like it this could not have been written if i hadn't done that and it was like well you still shouldn't have done it <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely one of those things that yeah yeah it's very few people who are in a gray area when it comes to that they either love it or they hate it you know um, I try to be more in that gray area, but I've had some experiences with second person where I'm just like, oh, that's so cringy. But then I've also had experiences where like, oh yeah, there's no other way this could have been written. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. Uh, and so, so I guess I can tell this, um, so I have, cause I just announced this on, I got permission to announce this, uh, on, and I, I put, I put it on Facebook. I haven't put it on my my blog or my 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 other social media i haven't i haven't really figured out like you know i have a twitter account that was my main thing for a while but twitter sucks now so i, I <laughs> you know, so i'm trying to figure i'm on blue sky i'm on threads i'm on instagram yeah i don't really know how to operate those things but i'm there yeah. uh but uh so so i've recently sold uh, a new horror story uh called uh machine learning which you know using you know the chat gpt term there <laughs> you know and i i sold that to cosmic horror monthly uh it's gonna come out in january or february of, of next year congratulations and <laughs> thank you and and they're giving me uh charles uh, and Carson, who run that magazine, they're great guys. They're 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 giving me permission to use that story in the in the short story collection. I'm I'm hoping to put out next year, which will be called Slow Burn. Okay. Uh, I, I'm very happy to be able to use that title. Uh, so so that story, uh, I originally was just I I had sworn to Carson and, and Charles that they've published a couple of my stories previously uh, and the first one they actually solicited from me and the second one I wrote it you know I, I actually had a different market in mind and it looked like that wasn't going to pan out so even before I sent it to anywhere I offered it to them instead and they and they loved it so they they published it uh, and so for this third story, I was like, you know what, guys, I'm I'm going to actually try and get you something during your submission window. And so that was just where the, where the goal uh, started was trying to come up with something for that. And uh, I have uh, uh, this year I've read a whole bunch of Shirley Jackson novels. You know, I've, I'd only read a few of her short stories before. Now I've read all of her novels. So I I'm very proud. <laughs> I finally made time to do that. And so so I was kind of taking some inspiration from that and sort of, you know, the the, the style that I started with, at least. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I had like kind of a kernel of, of, of an idea, but uh, I couldn't quite figure out, you know, sometimes you have the idea, but then you're like, OK, so what is the story? And it just won't and it just won't come. I have found that sometimes. And but then I had this uh, the, then there was a night where I had this really bizarre, vivid dream. And, you know, the dream itself, you know, the, 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 the dream, the dream itself wasn't like I didn't during the dream think, oh, you know, this is this is connected to my short story. But when I woke up, I was like, okay, what happened in that dream could be what happens in this story. Okay. And it just like, you know, it just like clicked. And I was like, oh, I've got it. I know that feeling. That means I've got it. <laughs> and they did it. And they did end up buying the story. So, you know, um, yay, 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 unconscious mind. And uh, I eventually would, I've, you know, 
Mythic Delirium had another incarnation. You know, I, I shut down kind of the print version and went to an all digital version that was actually kind of different. It published both uh, fiction and stories. And I did that for about five years. And in and in the, the meantime, I continued to kind of experiment with books and uh and and, and we published uh what I mentioned before, Bone Swans by CSA Cooney. That was our first ever attempt at uh, you know putting out a single author collection and it won the World Fantasy Award. <laughs> so so uh you know the sort of to to not drag this out any further, you know, <laughs> there was this kind of long, slow evolution where, you know, I tried all these different things and they all sort of had, you know, you know, varying shortcomings and varying levels of success. And I ended up a book publisher, yeah. which I still am. Yeah. Uh and and you know, and that the 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 sum total of all of that is you know, now like a, a quarter century of doing this, which is kind of mind boggling for me to think about. Uh, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to, I already sort of plugged, uh, you know, Th Theodora Goss's new book. Yeah. Uh, we're, because we're a micro press, I, I only put out like one or two new titles a year. I don't, you know, I don't, you know, I'm, more active small presses will put out like you know dozens of titles i don't have time to do that i have a day job yeah. <laughs> and uh so but you know i we we try to kind of make up you know what what we don't do in quantity we try to kind of make it for in quality and like focusing on promoting the titles we do put out uh and so this year we put out three books which for me is a lot but and that's kind of meant to tie into the idea that we're celebrating our 25th and making it a special year. And uh, before we put out uh, Theodora Goss's book, uh, I, I put out this new this novel from uh, C.S.E. Cooney, who you know who wrote Bone Swans, mm -hmm. uh, the Twice Around Saint, which is I don't know how clear uh, a, a, a vision of the cover art you have here, but uh, so that novel is like, you know, if you, it's like nothing you've ever read. If, if, if you read it, it's, it's set, it's set in this sort of fantasy version of a 1920s technology level society. Like they're just getting, like, they're just getting, they've just developed like black and white film and, and they're having like the first cinemas, but also it's, it's a, it's set in this city that is, um, uh, contained behind this you know titanic wall of ice and 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 the rulers the rulers of the cities are are angels but huh. they're not uh they're not like you know they're not like harp and wings angels like if you see you know if you see this figure on the cover with like all all the eyes and <laughs> you know and and the feathers you know they're 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 what they're what's referred to as biblically correct yeah. angels yeah. and 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 they're they're these actually the the majority of them are very terrifying beings yeah. <laughs> and and the story the story is about the woman who runs the city's cinema who has been chosen to be a saint by by one of these angels and and how she she may or may not bring about a revolution okay uh, and yeah it's 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 a wild ride of a story and uh the other new book that that we brought out this year is uh like smoke like light by Yukimi Ogawa and this is our first ever time it's not that we've never published authors from other countries before but this is this is our first time putting out a whole book you know from from um for, from uh a non-american author uh you know yukimi ogawa obviously she's japanese uh -huh. and this is her debut uh collection of short stories although you know these stories have been seen they're they're you know they're published in clark's world and 
the magazine of, of fantasy and science fiction and a, a number of, of kind of you know, prestigious markets like that. And one of the things that's just one of the things that's just great about Yukimi, uh, you we were talking earlier about, you know, kind of different genres and blending genres like uh, uh, Yukimi will write, you know, science fiction, fantasy, horror, romance, mystery. And, and that will all be in one short story. <laughs> <laughs> you know she she really she 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 really kind of she she really kind of lets loose when it comes to just you know be, being in, incredibly creative in how she and in, in, in how she crafts her stories but she also makes a lot of like like with theodora goss you know she also she also uses a lot of folklore and legend uh, in in as kind of the jumping off point for what she writes uh so you know we're very, very happy to have brought this out and that's our most recent title uh, cool so well, i think that brings me up to date yeah, yeah. Uh, that was um you actually answered all of the questions that i was going to ask you whoops <laughs> no, 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 that's okay no but that's good i mean i still got you know all the information that i wanted um it I definitely um like the sound of several of the titles you mentioned, but the one um the the one that you just showed where you said it was about um the angels, but they were like biblically accurate. Like yeah, that yeah, one, yeah. The the twice drowned saint. Yeah, that one is right in my will house. I am awesome very much into just studying like angel lore, like just in general. Um I study it from all different cultures and things like that. Oh, so that book, okay. Yeah, I'm very excited about that one. Cool. <laughs> And the last question I have for you, I'm really excited about this one. <clears throat> I love coming up with questions like this. So uh, this was in a little is a little bit of a scenario. So let's say you're going on a road trip with some authorly friends to promote your work. Um, you each person has to take turns driving, and you have several stops on the way over the next seven days. Oh. What? five items do you need to survive this trip outside of the usual luggage and like toiletries oh well my kindle <laughs> absolutely uh, <laughs> my kind i haven't gotten to use my kindle that much in a while but it's it's very it's it's it's, it's pretty essential to me it, it it comes with me on on most trips um you know, you're 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 saying not I was almost going to say my phone, but that's a typical item these days. Isn't it? Yeah, Every, everybody's, yeah, everybody's everybody's got one. Well <laughs> so so obviously uh obviously copies of my books to okay. to, to 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 read from and to show off. I, I guess I would count that as one object. Okay. Uh you know, a steno pad with a pen okay. for, for reasons that I've explained before. I love so so uh when I uh, when I do go to conventions and I and sometimes we have a dealer's table or I do a signing or something like that, um, what I do as like an anecdote as anecdote antidote antidote to the phenomenon of like kind of sitting there waiting to see if anyone's going to come up to you is I get my steno pad out and I'll start working on something. And what I have found is that when I do that, inevitably someone comes up and interrupts me. Right. <laughs> you know, and 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 so it's a good it's a good way to kind of pass the time and maybe, you know, people get people get curious and you know, I guess you're more approachable when you're not looking at them, <laughs> or I am at least. Uh so so definitely that. Um ah. So this I can reach for when I do get to sign a book. Uh, my wife, Anita, is very, uh, very crafty. She's an artist oh. and uh, she she created this pen for me. This is what I use to sign books. I don't know how if, if you can see it, it's a severed finger. It is a finger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a severed. So this this is this is this is my signing pen. So this. This is a talisman that I always take with me 
on 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 trips like that and ah and so that was four right yes, yes. and so uh unfortunately i can't reach it but i'm i'm wearing it in in one of the photos i sent you okay uh, my my wife also made for me this hat yeah that um it it's it's i guess it's not quite a top hat uh but it's <laughs> it's very heavily decorated with uh it's very heavily decorated and every oh anita's just come in she's going to hand me the hat <laughs> <laughs> Gotta, she's got to get the hat out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here, here, let, hand it here. This way, you don't have to be on camera. Okay, so <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so here's the hat, and so you can see in a way that maybe isn't that easy to see when I'm actually wearing it. It's decorated with these patches that are my book covers. That is so cool. Oh and, my goodness, that is so cool. And uh, you know this is true. Uh, you know here's the here's the mythic delirium logo. Here's another one of my here's another one of my poetry books, and it has it has gears on it. Yeah. Which people people think people think that's like kind of a generic steampunk thing, but it's actually a reference to uh, it's actually a reference to a novella of mine called Sleepless Burning Life, which is set inside a, a gigantic mechanical clock <laughs> you know you wouldn't you know people wouldn't know that but that is what it is and you know it has this uh it has this metal spider on the front which is which is both a reference to um one of my early i have an early poem called um uh, called third shift at the plasteel spider factory and you know I had a live, you know, God, does anyone remember a live journal? I had a live journal for a long time that was called the Plasteel Spider Factory. And so that's, uh, that connects to that. But I also have a book called The Spider Tapestries, okay. uh, which is a short story collection of mine that is, that is more my science fiction and fantasy stuff. It's, you know, it's not like, it's not like out and out horror, like unseeming or aftermath of an industrial accident. So that's, so that's where that comes from. And uh, also, it's covered with buttons. Oh, my goodness, it is. <laughs> which, which, you know, is a reference to the, to the button bin and, yeah. and the stories that are the sequels and the prequels to that. And uh, this, if you if you notice, there's, there's these yellow buttons yeah. that, that make that make a pattern. Uh, and And that is actually... <laughs> That is actually the yellow sign uh, from you know Robert W. Chambers, the King in Yellow. It's, so it's a so it's like kind of an H.P. Lovecraft era reference Ooh, that, she, cool. that she embedded into the hat. Nice. So obviously, I I try to bring this thing with me yes. <laughs> wherever I can. Yes. And usually at conventions, I'm wearing it. You know, uh, you know if you if you pardon me putting it this way, like. Uh, you know, pudgy, bearded, balding dudes with glasses. There's not exactly a shortage of them at <laughs> any at any given science fiction convention. No. So 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 this is a way to kind of like stand out. You know, ideally people see the hat and they're like, oh, that's Mike. <laughs> you know? I love it. The hat is yeah. awesome. <laughs> I typically just have like my lucky bookmark with me. It's a wooden bookmark, but you have like a whole like thing. Yeah, it, yeah, I have all this. I have all these accessories, mostly created by Anita, which is, which I, is I love it's wonderful it. that she's willing to do that for me. Yes, that's cool. Well, so those are the five items that you need. And I, I love that list. Um, Thank make, you. Making me rethink my list a little bit. <laughs> oh.